Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to Views on the Continent on your Pan-African channel, Africa Media. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about what is making news between Rwanda and uh, the United Kingdom. We're going to talk about this treaty that was signed between the United Kingdom and Rwanda. We should take note that some two years ago, this treaty was uh, cancelled because we had some political claims that Rwanda is not a safe country for the United Kingdom to deport those who are asylum seekers for Rwanda to take care of them and process the documents for them to be deported back to their various countries or if they will be reliable for them to stay in Rwanda. But another opportunity came for the country and this time around a court ruling was heard and the Supreme Court ruled against Rwanda's plan because there was a risk of deported refugees who would have their claim wrongly ascertained or wrongly handled and they're going to be deported in their various countries without facing a good trial proceedings according to them. The new treaty is expected to be followed by a later week of publication of legislation declaring Rwanda a so-called country not fit for talking about the activities they have. However, this is likely to trigger a new round of political and legal wrongdoings in the country because people feel Rwanda is not a safe heaven to deport people as they also have some uh, activities like human rights activities and also plans against uh, freedom of speech or politicians not given the right to stand against President Paul Kagame. So others think Rwanda is not a safe heaven for these people to be deported to. But the treaty has finally been signed and uh, the first uh, tra those to travel for the first time to Rwanda were programmed last week but the flight was cancelled and so Sharon Wagon, an immigration lawyer said Rwanda has a lot of crimes or uh, reports against human rights and so the government's new policy is not uh, one to be looked forward to. So ladies and gentlemen we're going to talk about if Rwanda is an unsafe country for them to receive these refugees, why did the country accept such a treaty and what is it going to benefit the people of Rwanda, what is it going to benefit those who are seeking asylum and if this is a good point in time for Rwanda to take such an action. So ladies and gentlemen, this is what we are talking about today. We have uh, our panelists not in the studio, over through Zoom, we have Walters Achia in the USA. Good afternoon, you're welcome to the program. Good afternoon, Emmanuel. My pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for joining us. We also have Mr. Hassan Adams in Nigeria. Good afternoon. You're welcome to the program. Good afternoon, Emmanuel. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you for joining us. Let's watch this video, some of the houses which were shown in Rwanda. Rwanda is ready to receive the asylum seekers. They have put a whole quarter ready to receive them. We have the short-term houses that are fit to receive them and the whole procedure put in place, those to welcome them, how they are going to leave before the procedure takes place and what is going to happen. So let's watch this video. When we come back, we'll start talking about the process. In the 18 months since this plane sat on a Wiltshire runway ready to deport asylum seekers to Rwanda, not one has made the journey. But three Home Secretaries have. James Cleverly today, following in the footsteps of Suella Braverman and Priti Patel. It's the latest attempt to make the government's Rwanda deportation policy workable. After the Supreme Court ruled it couldn't trust Rwanda to respect the safety of those deported there. We feel very strongly that this treaty addresses all the issues raised by their lordships in the uh, Supreme uh, Court. The treaty declares that those relocated to Rwanda cannot be deported to the country they first escaped. There'll be a new body, the treaty says, to hear appeals if asylum is refused inside Rwanda. Those refused asylum, the treaty says, will still be allowed to stay in Rwanda. The government's promised independent monitoring of migrants' conditions and a confidential whistleblowing system for complaints. Rwanda has now established a strong reputation for the humane and a professional administration of uh, refugees and uh, migrants. 
It's only three weeks since the Supreme Court ruled that Rwanda's actions have repeatedly fallen short of its international commitments. Extrajudicial killings, deaths in custody, enforced disappearances and torture. Since Rwanda has ratified many international human rights conventions, this evidence raises questions as to its compliance with its international obligations. Government sources have said the Supreme Court's judgments on life in Rwanda were out of date. The Supreme Court detected ingrained behaviour in the Rwandan government that drove its judgment. The Supreme Court said that it didn't expect there to be sufficient change in the short term. And um, who knows how long that is, but this judgment is only three weeks ago. Obviously, the evidence is a bit older than that. Um, but you're right, the Supreme Court talked about both practices, but also culture amongst the authorities in Rwanda and their understanding of their international obligations being deficient. After meeting his third Home Secretary in 20 months, the Rwandan Foreign Minister sounded peeved at the Supreme Court judgment when Rwanda, he said, had been called a moderate state in recent times. How did we go from moderate to dangerous country in just four short years? And how much of this perception is linked to internal UK politics? Although James cleverly said after today's treaty the courts should be satisfied, the government's still working on additional new legislation aimed at fending off legal challenges due to emerge this week. For that video. So let me begin with you, um, Mr. Walter. What do you make of this treaty between UK and Rwanda on asylum seekers being deported to Rwanda for them to take care of the deportation process and the UK to even pay them to take care of them? What do you make of this? Uh, first of all, I want to applaud the uh, the welcoming the hospitality, uh, which is uh, part of African tradition, uh, that's coming from Rwanda. Uh, but then Rwanda making uh, making it a safe haven, making its country a safe haven for uh, asylum seekers. Uh, to me, I don't think it's a wise decision. Rwanda is a developing country, a third world country for that matter and accepting or making it available to immigrants uh, who are deported, uh, maybe for humanitarian reasons or so, uh, in the guise of avoiding the boats uh, flying or um, flying the Atlantic Ocean. I think uh, it's going to weigh so much on Rwanda in the nearest future, uh, because the amount or the number of people who, who fly the Mediterranean to go abroad, to go to other countries, including UK itself, it's 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 very the, the amount is very high and i think in less than no time rwanda is going to be saturated and uh that notwithstanding uh mindful of the fact that rwanda also opened its borders for immigrants in africa to get in uh, without any visa without any uh, restriction in movement uh, and then added to these uh, we are just to note that the immigrants who will be deployed from uk are not only Africans. So many people in very various parts of the world trying to get into UK will, according to the treaty, be deported and uh, accepted in Rwanda. So having that set of people and then those again from Africa who will be wanting to enter Rwanda, to me, I think it's just going to create a kind of um, a kind of saturation, and this saturation is going to bear on the economy, on the natural resources and even on the population itself, because Rwanda is face a kind of, of population problem, economic problem, and also natural resources problem, which I think it's something, I don't know if the uh, the authors and those who went into the treaty uh, did take cognizance of that fact before accepting or before making their country available for such a treaty.